In the spring, Buckingham took Charles across the channel to meet his potential bride. They've been negotiating through these months for the sister of the King of France, Louis XIII's sister, Madame Royal Henrietta Maria. And uh, of course, uh, the meeting of the two was uh, difficult because Charles was very concerned about his future. What if she were taller than he? You know, here he was around five feet. His, his grandmother, a French princess, had been six feet tall. What if his wife was? But he worried about that, and he was very nervous. The religious issue, she would be a devout Catholic. He was an Anglican. That would be a problem. Parliament wanted resolved. And he was nervous. Charles was nervous and haughty and, and of course, awkward at their first meeting. Henrietta Maria was in tears because she didn't want to marry a Protestant. She thought this was the next to damnation. She had no intention of changing her religion. So it was a rather awkward meeting. But the agents in charge reconciled the business of religion, so on and so forth. They were married in, in Paris, and then they crossed the channel back to England and were married again there in an Anglican quasi-Anglican ceremony. There was a priest in attendance, too. It was sort of iffy, but they were married. But the death of the Duke of Buckingham now caused Charles to focus on his wife of two years. He'd ignored her all this time. Here he was, deep in grief, moaning and mourning and carrying on. And what did Henrietta Maria do? She said, oh, ma chérie, venez à moi, pauvre, ma pauvre petite. Took him in her arms, comforted him, took care of him for days until he was mourning and grief eased. Well, of course, by the end of this, he was focusing on her. And he found her charming and ingratiating and warm and a comfort. Well, you can see what's going to happen. Their relationship began to blossom. And within a few months, the inevitable. Now, unfortunately, uh, their first effort was a miscarriage on her part, but there was more to come. Henrietta Maria, personally, uh, for one thing, she was even shorter than her husband, <laughs> which was a great relief when they first met. Uh, she was really tiny. And uh, she was the daughter of Henry IV, Henri IV. He was the founder of the Bourbon dynasty in France, and Marie de Medici, an Italian. Uh, so that was her mix. She was nearly 10 years younger than Charles. She had pretty deep, dark eyes and dark hair, white skin. And uh, she was extremely devout. This has to be pointed out early. Uh, well, as queen, she proved herself utterly charming and mature. She did not have any of her husband's insecurities, for one thing. She knew who she was. And she used this. Charles was always, you know, serious, and this made him aloof. Uh, but she was stylish and vivacious. She didn't care what people thought. She refused to attend his coronation. She said, this is a Protestant ceremony. I do not attend a Protestant ceremony. So, that was all right. But in the beginning, when they were first married, of course, it was this damn Buckingham. Buckingham this, Buckingham that. She was excluded from everything. She was just ready to, you know, she hated Buckingham. But now, he was dead. And her husband was grieving, and she comforted him. And their love grew. Finally, in 1630, she gave birth to their first living child, a son, who was named Charles and would be the Prince of Wales, and eventually King. The next year, she gave birth to their first daughter, who lived, Mary, and then a year and a half after that, their second son, James, who was the Duke of York, also eventually King. And uh, several years after that, in a couple of miscarriages, uh, she gave birth to their last child, another daughter, whom they narrated, named Henrietta uh, Anne, Henrietta Anne, and they called her Manette in the family. 